May the peace of Jesus be with you. It is a blessing to be with you and to be in the house of God. We praise God for your for your sake. We praise God for the prayers that you offer on our behalf and on our behalf of the ministry. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. This afternoon we are going to discuss the prayer that accelerates our destiny. Uh, we are going to read in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, 9 to 10. Yarushaga Venese Ichuahiro. Kandinina Yamuse Yabesi Kuko Yavuzati Namuzara Yagahinda. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers and his mother called him his name Jabez saying because I bore him in pain. Yabez atakambira imana ya Israeli. Aravuga ati icyampa ukamba umugisha rwose. Icyampa ukagura imbago yanje. Icyampa ukuboko kwa kukabana nanjye. Icyampa kandi ndi byago ntibimbabaze. And Jabez called on the name on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Amen. Amen. The month we are in, we named it the month of acceleration to our destiny. Sometimes you can drive a car slowly. And and when the GPS tell you that you must get there and you are late, you accelerate so that you can get there sooner. That's what we call acceleration. So concerning this word, anybody who is born, anybody, was born on God's purpose. No one was born by accident and took God by surprise. Everybody is born according to God's plan. Number two, Anybody who is born, Imana numugabo wuzuzishingano. God is a responsible man. Imana iteguri kinu chose kizatuma uyumundu ya mugi huwa tazi. Uvu ya mubite kirezo zanje akaza mwisa tazi. Akaza hana tazi. Reka muteguri le. Ibiza tuma iba honeza. Mberi yuko ngera kungaruka. God prepares ahead of time for this person who's going into a country he doesn't know, a place he doesn't know, so that he can fulfill his plan and come back to him. God first looks around and determines the trusted people that he can be born in their family. God doesn't make any mistake. 
ushobora kubona umuntu akabyarira iwabo kurugero you can see someone give birth at, at their own house in their home umuntu akibaza tari ko se uri ya mwana we imana eramuzi and you may ask yourself does god know that child uwo mwana nawe simpanuka even that child is not a mistake gusa igihe yavukiyemo nuburyo yavukiyemo sibyo imana yari yateguye ariko uwo mwana yagombaga guca mu nda yuwo mugore maybe the time and the way the child is born was not in god's plan but that child was supposed to go through that mother's womb uwo nawe even her even that child imana nawe yamugeneye umunani we god has prepared an inheritance for that child imana igira ibintu ishira mu muntu god has things that he puts in men uyu muntu namara gukura once this person grows up azabikoresha ingishoro kizatuma baho they will use it as a capital for their well being niyo mpamvu mu maso y'imana that's why in god's eyes in the mind of god he never created a poor person he never created a person who is worthless if it's the case where do those things come from why do people be poor why do people hate each other why do people get jealous Why do people not love each other? One gets wealthy another one poor. One becomes great another one lowly. Where did we get that inequality? Those who don't know they blame it to God and they say that's God's will. Oh yeah no see you that's not him kimwe mu bisubizo natanga mbere ko ninjira mu nyigisho one of the solutions i can offer before i go into the teaching Niki. is the following bibiri iravuga ngo the bible says ngo imana yahaye umwana w'umuntu isingwa iyobore ngo na isigaranije god gave earth to man and he kept the heavens to himself umwana w'umuntu atangiye kuyobora isi abigisamba ari ikunda noneho atangira kwikubira abanda bigizayo when the son of man started to rule over the earth they became greedy and put away other people niyo mavu sanga harubusumbane that's why you find inequality ugerageje na kugira ngo agere hari imbere agomba gukoresha ingufu nyinshi imbaragaze kurwana bye akaba arimo bimugira uwo ari we another person who tries to go ahead to advance they must force themselves to become the person they are supposed to be muri isi rero principe y'ibinyembaraga bimira ibinyentegenke ni yikora in this world the principle of strength and weakness works ibinyembaraga the strong igihe cyose biremerera ibinyentegenke they overcome the weak ikindi nacho another thing nibyaha it is sins ibyaha sins bituma umuntu atagendera ijana kwijana mu byimana yamugene the cause the person not to be 100% in god's will kuko ibyaha because sins bigira nyirabyo bigira se they have their fathers iyo rero umuntu abaye mu byaha akagendera mu byaha akaba mu nyabyaha ntagera mu byimana yamugeneye ahubwo ajya mu yinizira yundi mugabo uhatsa abanyabyaha when someone walks in sin dwells in sin and lives in sin they don't get to God's promise they go into the yoke of the person who is the head of the sinners the master the master of the sinners iyo twigisha ngo abantu bave mu byaha abantu bakiranuke si inyungu z'ababivuga ahubwo ni inyungu yugomba kubivamo kugira ngo abashe gukandagira muri destiny aho imana yamugeneye when we teach for people to get out of sin it is not the benefit of the preacher it is the benefit of the listener so that they can get into God's destiny hari abantu benshi there are many people batakunda kubwirwa ko ari abanyabyaha 
who do not like to be told that they are sinners and it's true nobody nobody will be happy to be told that they are sinners even the sinners reject that premise the problem we have this is the way it is you see my left arm it is towards the east I don't have a compass to know exactly where it is but I'm going to call it the east and this uh, arm I'm going to call it the north this is the way I am the plan or the way that God has prepared for me when I was born is when I live on this earth and I, ha- I go towards the north the way of the north every time I will find all the good things that God prepared for me before my birth to walk in them but the world the parents school or education sins injustice has caused me to ignore this way and go towards the east in the way of the east what is in there is everything that hurts me I work hard but I don't get anything I seek and I don't find I work very hard I use all my wisdom I use all my trickery and I don't find it. Why? There is nothing in this way except the things that hurt my heart. Because I'm not achieving what I want. I am not doing what I was prepared to do. I will find thorns. I will find rocks. I will find mud and it is going to be hard for me to take myself out of it I will always I will always fight for myself to get out of those problems because I'm in the way that God did not prepare for me. It is not just you. It is everyone who is in the place where they are not supposed to be. Who are walking in the things they are not supposed to walk in. And this is what shows it. It is a purpose uh, desperation that continues it is grief it is fighting the day when Peter left Jesus on the cross he had been three years and Jesus had told him Peter follow me when Peter saw Jesus dying he thought it was over and he went back to his old way and left the way of Jesus this is what he did he went back to his old ways of fishing and he went back to the old experience where he used to fish and he used all his knowledge for fishing and he went to fish in the time of fishing and he went in the sea that he is used to and he fished all night 
and he could not find anything. And he was amazed. A child of Bethsaida who grew up in Capernaum near the water. How can I work all night and not find even one fish? He was fishing in the wrong place. Yes, when Jesus got there, he told him three things. And in one word, do you love me? He said, yes, I love you. Peter, Peter do you love me? He said, yes, I love you. Peter, Peter do you love me? And he was hurt because he asked him three times. Do you know why Jesus asked him for three times? The day they caught Jesus, Peter denied him three times. When Jesus got to him, and he asked him three times, which is equal to three times of rejection. And Jesus said, throw your nets to the other side. And he caught so many fish. And John told him, Peter, it's the Lord. They had buried him. When John saw the way Jesus said, it is the Lord. He said, Peter, he is the Lord. And Peter left everything and ran as he was going to bow before him to, no, 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 no. he told him no Wait. do not ask for forgiveness do you love me do you love me do you love me he said yes feed my sheep Hallelujah. So Peter went back into the north way that he had left. When he was still going towards the east, he could not get any fish even though he was experienced. Let me tell you what. It is not education that will cause you to be great. Mm-mm. No. It is to be where God called you to be. It is, it is not your family that will cause you to be great. It is for you to be in the place where you are supposed to be. It is not your tribe. No. Oh, yeah. It is where God prepared for you. Gusa. But when that education finds you where God prepared you to be, it is an addition. When knowledge finds you where God prepared for you, it is an addition. Seek, Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything will follow you. So let's go back to the story of Jabez. May God help me today you should leave this place having stepped back into the things that God prepared for you. Because you are tired. No matter where you go, if you are still in, if you are still astray, astray. if you are still astray, you will remain astray. Being in America is not going to change your, the fact that you are going astray. There is no north and there is no east. They don't go together. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. No. Line parallel. Umurongu genda guchi. Ugera kuri infinity. The parallel lines go all the way to infinity. Umurongo wa komeji. The parallel line that you continue. Nuo. 
that's the one kirisuka kura point de flexion ukavuna ugahindukira turning guhindukira except if you do an inflection point and turn around atarivy if you don't do so ubuyobe burangiriza mu buyobe astray we remain astray the bible says jabes was more honorable than his brothers he was not born that way even though it was what god had prepared for him a long time ago. but his lifestyle caused him not to be so when the mother gave birth to him there were tragedy that came upon him something in the time of the judges they had killed his father and the mother was grieved other things that his mother was raped and she gave birth to him in that I just think that the mother gave birth while she, she, she it was giving died birth. while she was giving birth to him. just like Rachel died while she was giving birth to there are many hypotheses but there is no clear source what, what we know is this when the mother he said your name will be Jabez because I bore you in pain that name pain that he gave to you continue to walk with his life until he changed the course of God you must be careful about the names you call your, your children. The name you call your child can change their future. Remember, the invisible have power over the visible. In physics, they say that the light has power over the visible. You find grass as grass with the color of the grass but you do not know that it's the rays of the sun that cause the grass to be green. You don't see the rays of the sun but we see them through the grass. When you cover the grass so that it doesn't get rained after one week you when you remove the stone you find the grass as yellow because they did not get the rays of the sun so the invisible they change the life of the visible the name it changes the way a person walks. It changes the way a person sits. It changes the way a person eats. It changes the future of a person. Don't take any name that you get on TV and name it your child. Or do not take your pain and your grief and put them on your child. Many times when you are angry, they beat their children. The anger that is in you, you pour it on innocent children. Even the name that we give our children, there must be names that keep them in their future, in their destiny, and not take them away from the plan of God. In 1992, I was in Goma and we were preaching the gospel. And they came to tell us about a parent who lost their child. That we may go and pray for that family. The child came from the top floor and they threw themselves to the ground and they died and they buried them. 
When we got to that house, we found great grief. And they had asked me to go and pray for them. And I was in evangelism. So I took the parents and I asked the parents about the story and I said how did the child die and they told me they threw themselves from the floor and they asked what was the name of the child the mother told me the child's name but the father named him again Rambo 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 is a movie actor an American movie actor they threw themselves from a tree and to catch him uh, it was difficult to the point where he broke his, uh, his members as they saw the, they watched the movie they called the child Rambo and they started calling the child Rambo. And after two weeks, the child told his friends, he was like seven years old, he said, Rambo, I'm going to fly. And he threw himself out. And the child died. If they had not called that child that name, the child will still be alive. Be careful about, about the names you call yourself and the names you call your children. I'm not going to take too much time. Jabez. In the plan of God, he had to be more honorable than his brothers. But in the plan, in the plan of the mother and the circumstances, they called him a name that changed God's plan. Verse 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel. Why did he call the God of Israel? This is what he said. God, that you would bless me indeed. He blessed me. What does this word mean? He was in a curse. The person who seeks a blessing is the one who rejected the curse. Number two. I ask you to enlarge my territory. You give me a large place. That means he was locked in a small place in life. Whether it's in his mind. Whether it's in life. Number three. That your hand will be with me. Which means. There was another hand that was leading him in a different way which did not belong to God. And you understand the things that the hand was doing to him. Number four. That you keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. In Kinyarwanda, they used uh, pain, but in English they call evil so that it may not pain me. This word that says that I may not cause pain, in another version he says that I may not cause pain. That means everywhere he went, he would leave people in pain. He caused people. He caused people pain. He was a pain, a problem causer. Everywhere he went, even the people who had their own peace, he would trouble it. When he got to this, 
He would not even go among people. He lived by himself. Kuva yabesa vut. Since Jabez was born, kugeza yabese, yabese ageze umunsi wo gusenga. Until Jabez prayed, yarafita gahinda muri we kadashira. He had so much pain in his heart. Yarababa yabitabaho. He was so much in pain. Ngo asenga Imana. And he prayed to God. Bibiliya iravuga ngo the Bible says, "Go no kungwimana imuhibzo ya sabz." So Hallelujah. Granted to him what he prayed. I wish that he may also grant what you are requesting. I wish that he may hear the prayer that is on your heart. I wish that the pain that you are walking with may come to an end. I wish that the disgrace that you live in may come to an end. May today be a special day in your life. Let me tell you. Who is this Jabez? His name means he brings sorrow and he's the man of sorrow. He brings sorrow and he's the man of sorrow. What trap does he come from? When you read this chapter 4 of First Chronicles, the first chapter of the of Chronicles, they talk about the genealogy of Israel. From Adam, all the way to Jacob. But they also include the genealogy of Esau. That is the first chronicle. I'm talking about two people who don't like to read genealogies in the Bible. You see, he begot, he begot, and you leave that chapter. But I also want to tell you that those are scriptures too. Because this they have reasons that's why we are talking about Jabez. The second chapter of Corinthians all the way to four they talk about the genealogy of the tribe of Judah. And they continue with Simeon and others. But these chapters, they talk about Judah. Judah is the fourth son of Jacob. And he's the fourth son of Leah. His, great, his brother is Reuben. Followed by Levi. Followed, followed by Simeon. Then Levi. Then Judah. Then Dan. So let me tell you. Chapter 2 3 and 4 They talk about the genealogy of Judah It is amazing I'm talking about Jabez Who is Jabez? On 1 Chronicles chapter 4 verse 4 they say the sons of Judah were Perez, Hezron, Carmi, Hur, and Shobah, born of uh, Tamar, who was his daughter in law. When you continue, and you get to verse 8. They talk about, they talk about cause begat Anub, Zobeba, and the families of Aharel, the sons of Harum. But when you get to chapter, uh, verse 9, this is 1 Chronicles 4 9. From nowhere, I had to Tabona, he could be some moon with Koya Bess, Tiba of Zangoyabza, Naka, 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 Naka
now from nowhere they start talking about Jabez who was more honorable than his brothers he squeezed himself in between they did not say that he is the son of Hashon or the son of Harun or the son of Etunan they did not say that so from verse 1 to 8 you do not see his father or his parents you just find him on verse 9 this is the problem how do we know where Jabez is from where does Jabez come from? Where is this person who came from nowhere to this uh, to, in this chapter? And from this chapter, this is the only place where they talk about an individual and what God did for him when he prayed. Other places they talk about the genealogy. But on verse 9 only and 10, they show us the power in prayer that can bring a person back into their destiny. Which means when someone has left the way of their destiny, prayer can bring them back. That's why when a servant of God lays hand on you, your destiny change and you go back in your original pure, a pure hand. A pure hand. Now all the hands will usher you into your destiny. Only a pure hand will usher you. Otherwise, everybody will be in their destiny because we had many hands laid on us. Where does it come from? It is amazing. There are some who teach. And you are going to read in commentary. And many preachers who talk about Jabez. They say that Jabez was a Jew, was from Judah. He was from Judah. He was, from Judah. He was Israelites. In one way, it's true. But it is not the full truth. No. His origin, he is not an Israelite. He was an African. I will prove it to you. You will not find it in any many commentaries. No. No. Mm-mm. No. Our brothers in Christ cannot write that. In their commentaries. In their commentaries. What they say is this. They say that he was from Judah. But in the teachings of the rabbis. In Talmud. there is a place where they speak the truth that he was not Israelite but these are the families that joined together it's as if you are an only child and you find yourself in a family and they embrace you or adopt you you find yourself in a city where a family or people from the same family live and you become part of them that's the way he was another person who was not of Judah 
ariko wahagarariye abayuda mu gutati kihugu but who represented judah when they went to spy the land yari kaleb he was kaleb kaleb Kalev in Hebrew it means that he's a dog. He had entered the family of Judah and became part of that family yet he was not from Judah. He the day when they went to spy the family of Judah said he will represent them and he did but he was not from them Caleb yarinde who was Caleb yarumukenezi he was a kenezite yabese yarinde who was Jabez yarumukeneti he was a kenite ndaza kubabwira i will explain this amen amen titwara abana b'Imana ariko twagizwe kuba abana b'Imana we were not children of God but we were made children of God. Heaven stands up and they say behold the child of God yet we are not his but we were made to be his. There are things that came in play for this to become who they are. Who are the Kenites? Yabes yarumukeni Jabez was a Kenite. Ntabwo yari umuyuda, ti yari umwisraeli. Ni nkuko Caleb nawe yarameze. Yari umukenezi. Umukenezi ni umukeni nabo benda guhurukundo. He was not a Jewish or Israelite similar to Caleb who was a Kenizar because Kenites and Kenizites have similarities. Commentaires zimwe bagerageza kuvuga ko Caleb ko Jabez irindi zina rye yitwaga Otiniel. Otiniel in some commentaries they try to say that Jabez was Oteniel but it's not true oh, yes, he, he was not the person he was a Kenite so who are the Kenites who are the family of the Kenites Kenites are the Mo- are Moses father in law. Who were the, the the father the father in law of Moses? Were they not African? Were they not Ethiopians? Miriam na Aaron ibatutse Moses ngo yazanye nde? Miriam and Moses uh, blasphemed Who did he bring? She brought an Ethiopian. He brought an Ethiopian wife. You remember that? The father-in-law of Moses was who? Jethro. Jethro. Do you remember Jethro? Jethro was a black man. That's where Moses got Zipporah. So the Ken is the family of the Kenites. They are the family of Jethro. That's where Jabez is from. Amen. Amen. I will show it to you again. Bamwe mu bakeni igiye ca Israel. Bari batuye mu majepfo y'Ubuyuda. Abandi bari batuye hafi y'Kedeshi kwa Naftali. Some of the Kenite family had settled in the south of Judah, others near Kedesh in Naftali. Let's look at those who lived in Judah, who lived with the family of Judah. Abakeni, abakeni. Say the Kenites. Abakeni ni the Kenites is where Jabez is from. And they lived among the Jews. How did, he, how did they live with them? The Bible tells us this. Judges 1 16. Bibiliya bavuga ngo nuko abana ba wa mukeni vuga ngo mukeni sebukwe wande ibi nije wabyanditse eh nije uyu mutagira ngo ndababeshye ngo uyu nawe aratwifatira no 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 ngo abana bande ba wa o ko murasoma sebukwe wande wa mose nabene nde yuda 
the children of Kenite, Moses' father-in-law, and the, and the family of Judah, they went up from the city of Palms into the wilderness of Judah which lies in the south near Arad and they went and dwelt among the people. Remember when Jethro found Moses in the wilderness and counseled him. And Moses appreciated it. When they, before they left, they took their in-law. His name is Hobab. He said, listen, we do not know the wilderness. Please, come and go with us. And show us the way. Show us where there is water. Because he is used to the wilderness. Where there is a snake. Because Hobab lived in the wilderness. And he refused. And Moses begged him. And he told him, we will give you a, a place among us. Hobab agreed and he took the family of the Kenites and they came. When they were about to divide the nation they put them in the family of Judah and they say, where Judah will live, you will also live. That's why that's why Jabez found himself among the tribe of Judah and he, he was not mentioned before. Because so, those who say that Jabez was a Kenite, yes, they are right. But when you go deep into and you research, you find out that he was not a Jewish. He was not a Jew. He was an African. When they lived in Judah, one of the family said, this is about wilderness. Let's go and find some green pastures. And those, they divided themselves and one of them went to uh, Naphtali. Do you know Jael. a person called Jael the Bible, Mambo. who hits Sisera with uh, yes. okay. he, he beat him with uh, in his tent. Do you remember her? Jael, you remember Jael? It was in the time of Deborah. As, he was, Baruch, Baruch, as she was fighting against the commander called no, Barak. No, no, no. She was fighting with the commander called Barak. And they fought against a ruler who, who, who was against them called Sisera. And God caused his chariots to, uh, to sink where Elijah killed the uh, 400 prophets. He was in the valley of Jezreel. Because he ran and found himself in the tent of Jael and Jael killed him and Jael was not a, a, a Jew she was also an African let me show you that place For those who went to Kedesh judges 4.11 and 17.. and Heberi umuki umukeni yari yaratandukanije yari yari tandukanije nabake nabakeni kuko bari buyuda nibo bene hobabu hobabu uramwibukwa 
sebuko wa Mose yarashinze ihema rye munsi y'igiti cy'umwela isana nimu hateganye ni Kadesh muri ya hema niho bikiye sisera donc uri ya mugabo witwa Heber umugore witwa Gajael uri ya Yael ni witwe sisera baraba Ken aba Ken boko basebuko wa Mose abanyafrika now Heber the Kenite of the children of Hobab the father in law of Moses has separated himself from the Kenites and pitched his tent near the terebent tree at Zanaim which is beside Kedesh Murabzibuka Komorongo 17 Ngo ariko sisera arahunga agenza ibirenge agera ku ihema rya Yaeli mu Kahebe w'umuken kuko yabina umwami wa Hasori n'umuryango wa Heberu mukeni bari bafitanya amahoro urumva ko bagenda gahose batangaga amahoro burya abanyafrika muri karakteri yabo na abanyamahoro uretse ibihe byababuyeho bacumbikira abantu bakira abantu bakunda abantu baba muri societe baracyasangira donc voilà ibyo ni byo bibagenda however muzabikomeze kandi however sisera had fled away on the foot of to the tent of jael the wife of Heber the Kenite, for there was peace between Jabin the king of Hazor and the house of Heber the Kenite. Normally, Africans are peaceful people. They host people, they uh, treat people well, so you should continue that. Let's read in 1 Samuel 15, 6. This time so we are going from the judges to the time of the kings. The judges and all these people were born in the time of judges. So the time of the kings came and Samuel became Hanyuma Saul agiye gukora ikintu Imana yanze agiye kwica abameleke kandi abameleke bari barakoranye isezerano na Yoshua muri ibuka. Saul is going to do something evil. Oh, oh sorry 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 sorry. Igihe pardon Saul agiye kwica abanyamereke Saul is going to kill the Amalekites Narimbitrenje n'abagebeyone no no aba nabanyamereke I was confusing them with the Gibeon Abo Moses yari yavuze ngo muzabarimbure ngo kuko babitanze imbere mwambutse The ones that Moses said you must destroy them because they went in your way when you were crossing Dero, over Sa- Samuel Saul abaye umwami So Saul became the king Ikintu cyambe yagiye gukora The first thing he did Agiye gukora ho abanyamereke He is going to kill the Amalekites Ariko mu ishaka rye ginshi ajya kwica n'abagibeyone batari babisabe neho bagiri yakaka But in his zeal he went and killed the Gibeonites and became a problem Let's go to 1 Samuel 15, uh, 5. It says, Saul went kuko mwagiriye imbabazi abisiraeli bose ubwo bavaga mu giputa nuko abakeni bava mu bameleke nicyage baberetse inzira bati mwadukoreye neza mwebwe simbica ariko ni muve mu bameleke kugira ngo twice abanyameleke ibyo bi ibyo bihe Saul yarakira umuntu mwiza Saul in verse 6 it says then Saul said to the Kenites go depart get down from among the Amalekites lest as I destroy you with them for you showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. Ndaza kugaruka gato nze kubereka impamvu ya Bese ari umu ari umukene. Ndaza kuhabereka gato ya. I will show you how Jabez is a Kenite. None urumva impamvu yavuze ngo ya Bese asenga Imana yande ya Israel. Now you understand why it says Jabez pray to the God of Israel. You cannot be no, an Israel and, and pray to the God of Israel. He would have said uh, Jabez prayed his God. But it says he prayed to the God of Israel. The Fila Elohe Israel Asengimana Israel. He pray to the God of Israel. Which means it was not his God in the origin, but he embraced him and he prayed to him. As we saw, the mother of Jabez bore him in pain. 
bituma mwita ya besi aravuga ngo namubyaranya gahinda and he called him jabez because he bore him in pain muzukuri benshi muri twe twisanga tumeze nka ya besi many of us found ourselves like jabez ijambo rya mbere first yame ya besi ni umuntu ufite amateka ateye impuhwe kandi ntabyiringiro byejo hazaza afite Jabez is a man with a pitiful past and no hope for a future. As you see him, he has a painful past. As many of you are following me and those who are sitting in the church, we have a painful past. It is not just painful. No, no, no. And we have no hope for tomorrow. That's the way Jabez was. You see things going from bad to worse and there is no tomorrow, there is no hope at the end. Number two, he is a man who struggles to find meaning and significance in life. What is my purpose? What is my value? How can I bring myself some value? How, how can I give a meaning to my life? This was his mindset. And that's how many of us think. Number three, he is a man who is desperate to be accepted by his fellow man. The only issue is this. No one accepts him. He has no good reputation. Anybody in life, you want people to accept you. Even if people call someone Satan and they accept you, you are going to accept them because they received you. I once went into a gachacha uh, uh, I went with my wife one time. And there was a case uh, against people who, who, did, uh, who committed acts of genocide. And people accused someone. This person did so and so. And other people stood up. And they say, listen. This person they are talking about. He hid us. He fed us. Today we exist and we are alive because of him. So what you are saying is not true. That was a very difficult case. And they, be, they came a division between the people. Some would say he killed the child of so and so, and others would say, no, he saved the son of so and so. Some say he's evil. Some say he's good. Who is good on this earth? is the person who accepts you the way you are. The one who accepts you the way you are is your brother. It is not your biological brother or sister. No. If you ask the Jew that was beaten on the way and you ask them who is the brother, who's your brother? He said this is the Samaritan who yet they hate each other, they don't intermarry and they despise each other. But Jesus said this is the brother who took him out of trouble other, other, other than the other ones who passed by. 
All of us want to be accepted. With our fellow men. It was the same thing with him. Number four. And this is most important. Yabes. Jabez is a man who craves relationship with God. Even though it is so. Even though nobody understands. Anyway, there is one person who created me. There is someone who brought me. I did not come by accident. I'm going to seek that person. All these things come for him to go and go back to his mind. He said, why am I getting tired? No one brought me on this earth. God brought me. Let me seek him. That's when Jabez started to enter in his destiny. The problem many of us take when we have these issues, we become angry against God rather than drawing near to God. And you say angrily, I'm not going to pray today, I'm just going to sleep. You can sleep, but he will remain God. The psalmist says, the psalmist says, in the time of the flood, he was still on the throne. So you cannot bring him into court. You cannot imprison him. You cannot be angry against him. Instead, seek him. What did, why did all this thing happen? Where was God? Where is God? Why is my child being so? Why am I missing these things? He's sitting on his throne. That's it. You revolt yourself, you do all kinds of things, but at the end, you are going to say, God, I'm coming back. You revolt yourself, but you come back, and you revolt yourself again, but you always come back. But after you understand the things that challenge you, and to understand the tragedy of your life, and the problems you have, stop behaving as if you live in solutions. Call upon the God of Israel. Jabez prayed to the God of Israel and he answered his request. First Chronicles 4.10 He called on the God of Israel and God granted him what he requested. There's something amazing here. God did not God did not change Jabez's name like he does to others. But he changed his future. Another slide, please, please. God did not change Jabez's name. But he changed his future. This is a way that I can illustrate his prayer. Jabez prayed like this. Lord, don't let my labor be my legacy. Listen. Someone can have a stamp of the things that show him. This is Jose. The name Jose uh, characterizes him. 
Do you know what the name Judah means? Judah means praise. When the mother mother of Judah gave birth to him, she said, I praise God. In in Hebrew, it's Yehuda. Judah is Iscariot. Do you know what Judah's Iscariot means? Yuda ish. Yuda ish. Ish nizina umugabo. Ish is. Hebrew ish in umugabo. Ish in Hebrew is a man. Akadugu du kiwa wo kari rwande gu efrata wa kita kariot. And the city next to Efrata where he comes from is called Kariot. Yitwa ga Yuda ish kariot umugabo we 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 kariot. His name was Ish Kariot, which is the man from Kariot. But his name was Judah. And Judah is So the reason why he was called Judah Iscariot was to differentiate him from Judah the brother of Jesus or Judah the other Judah who was in the ministry of, of Jesus. But Judah Iscariot is not a bad name. It is a good name. It's like saying Judah of Ephrath. Or Judah of Bethlehem. Judah Bethlehem or Bele Bethlehem. Judah Bethlehem, for instance. But we don't call them the, those names. Because that name is bad. But God. After Jabez prayed. God changed his future and left his name. But in the, the time when Rachel was giving birth, he called his, his son Benon. But his father called him Benjamin. When Rachel got to Ephrata, or Bethlehem where Jesus was born, she went into labor they were coming from Shechem to Bethel and they put her under a tree to give birth they were coming from Shechem and there was a long journey when they got to Bethlehem called Ephrata that's where Jesus was born she went into labor and she gave birth after she gave birth she passed away. But as she was leaving, she had a maidservant called Deborah, and she, Deborah told her, You have a son. And he was the second son. The first son was Joseph. This one was the second one. And Joseph had been sold. He never, she never saw him. And she was in grief that she lost Joseph. And, and now she's giving birth to Benon, another son. And she did not see him as well. Her last breath as she was dying, she called him Ben On. Ben in Hebrew is a son. And on means pain. He's the son of sorrow. Jacob, Jacob was standing next to her. And she, he knew the power of a name. The name Jacob took him to in exile for 21 years. Jacob 
and then he came back and the angel broke his hip and he received the name Israel none yumvisha umwana we bamwise Benon umwana wa makuba and now he hears his son being named the son of sorrow and he said no witwa benyamin your name is benjamin ben ben umwana the son yamin yamin ukuboko kwanje kwiburyo the right hand uri umwana ukuboko kwanje kwiburyo you are the son of the right hand niwe zina benyamin ya iserifata that's where benjamin came to pass niga kuzumva bamwita benon yari seri kura huwo mwana he removed benon right away ariko ya bese we but jabez is in a jeti yavuye his name did not change yeguma nyiri zina he kept the name irizina ya yabez the name of jabez kuberike why isengesho rya yabez ryarushije uburemere imbaraga zari mu izina rye the prayer of jabez overcame the name of jabez imana ni guwa masengesho aremerera ibyago bikuriho may god give you prayer that overcomes the troubles amasengesho aremerera imifumo ikugenda prayer that overcomes the curses that you are in amasengesho aremerera ubukana bw'iryo zina wambaye prayers that overcome the issues of that name kuri wowe on you kurugo rwawe on your family kuri bene wanyu on your brother you guchawe on your nation imana nibahe may god give you ibisubizo solution bivuye mu masengesho that come from prayer biremerere bitsikamire izo mbaraga zibabusama that can overcome the problems that you have yasenze ibintu bine he prayed for four things icya mbere yasengeye the number one yaravuze ngo mana icyambo kampo mugisha he say god that you give me a blessing yes sabzo mugisha wima he asked for a blessing of god ngo yo ngo icyambo kampo mugisha rwose that you give me a blessing ndavuga nihuta imigisha y'ubwoko bune yes sabzo i will talk fast about a fourfold blessing that iri jamo ngo icyambo kampo mugisha this word all that you give me a blessing iman itanze umugisha when god gives a blessing itanga ibintu bine iguhaye umugisha when he blesses you he gives you four things number 1 na magara meza it is health baza nyumugangano ngo adupime twese bagende bakudukorera test ya laboratoire laboratoire abo mubona benshi duhagaza himbere wasanga ati ati nawe abafite udusonga abafite utubyimba abafite udutansyo udusukari Abafite udutsi tumeze ukuntu ubuntu buntu bwima reka dusabe umugisha w'Imana tugira amagara meza sibyo bene data yesa tumagara meza if they were to bring a doctor here and to examine people we will find people with tension we will find people with issues in their own bodies so it is the grace of God let's pray for God's blessing ikindi ukitwa amagara meza health umenye ubwiza bwa magara iyo warwaye you know the importance of having good health when you are sick uriyuka you can run ukaryama you can sleep ukazukarya you can eat ukanyaruka you can run ari kiyo warwaye but when you got sick warebe ibiryo kumvugiye kuruka when you get sick and you can't even eat waje kubyuka bikanga bakakubyutsa umuntu umugabo umenyereye kwiruka bagenda bagufasha and they have to carry you and lift you up from your bed ubona abandi biruka baryo kuvunga ba ni maji cyangwa ni ibiki bingi you see people running and you ask yourself is this magic umenya gaciro kamagara you know the value of good health when you get sick among the blessings that jabez prayed for it was good health those are the blessings that god gives the second blessing that god gives when you ask for him he gives you a family it is so much pain to live without a family harabana bakurira mu bana benshi bakiruka bagende bagagaruka tibashobora kumva gahinda ku muntu wavutsa ari wenyine kandi ntagira umuryango people get are born in family of many children and they don't understand the pain of being an only child nintare zigira umuryango even lions have families cubs bajita cubs cubs ni ninyoni ndizifa kuguruka ngo ubone inyoni ko zirage na ma family even birds have families Ninzo kazigira ma family even snakes have families 
nubo nintare zibiriko zirarwana ziba zivuye mu miryango itandukanye if you see two lions or two cubs fighting they come from different families nudu simba tugenda tuguruka tujya tugira bene wabo tugira nyina na se na bene wabo nabo dugira family even the animals that you see flying around they have families ikintu gikome imana yahaye umuntu a great thing that god gave a, pr- a man no murya it is a family yabuye adam na eve he told adam and eve ngo ni mwororoke mugwiza multiply mbahaye family i give you a family bavandi brethren imana ni bahu murya May God give you a family. Imana ni ibahe family. May God give you a family. Ubwo nubwo ko bwa kabiri bwo mugishimanita. That is the second type of blessing. Udafita amagara ntacho wakora. If you don't have health you cannot do anything. Iguhaya amagara. If he gives you good health. Ikaguha umuryango. And he gives you a good. Ukabza rukororoka. And you give birth and you no multiply. No mugishongo. Is it a blessing? Is it not? Icheka tati manitanga. Number 3 mumigishitanga among the blessings that god give no butaka it is land ubutaka mu buryo buto no butaka mu buryo bugari ari cyo gihugu land in a small manner or land in a big way which is a, a country umuntu wese everybody agomba kugira igihugu ava must have a country they or, they come from umuntu wese everyone agomba kugira ubutaka must have their own land. Ahand ugeze hose. Where you go? Ikizemera ku Imana yaguhereye umugisha nubutaki haguhera. What is going to prove that God blessed you is the land that he gives you. Iguhinzu, he gives you a house. Ikitwi yawe. And it's called yours. Igihe ugicumbitse. When you are still being hosted or renting. Uburu umukitsi numwimukira. You are still a foreigner. Uburu mu pilgrim. You are a pilgrim. Uru umugenzi uri mu Kristo mu rugendo you are a pilgrim a Christian. but what proves that you have arrived that God has been pleased with you he gives you a house may you receive houses may you receive land may you not only have one uguru butagatexas ubugure indiana ubugure mene ubugure new mexico ubugure hose may you buy land in texas in main in different states aba ba ntubose mubona bafite amazanga imana yabahaye ubutaka yarabemeye nawe ni kwemere all the people that you see who have houses here god approved them so may god approve you too imani ihamagaye abraham when god called abraham yamubwiye ngo imuhayike He told him he is giving him what? Igihugu, a nation, a country. Imana yamubwiye tuva. He told him, "Ni kinini cyane." It is large. But kandi, and ni mwakibyaremo ngo mukiwe bazabarya. Ngiye ko kubohereza mu kindi gihugu kizabarera neza. Numara kuba benshi muzakisuke mu musani nzige mufata igihugu cyose. Niko abisirayeli bagiye kureregwa muri Afrika. Imana yaboherije muri Afrika niho batica abantu. Uretse ubuko ibintu byahindutse ariko kera nta munya Afrika wica ngo munya Afrika ariko mu bihe by'imperuka abanya Afrika barica so god sent the family of abraham to multiply in africa so that they could come and fill the promised land at that time no africans who killed people they host now they do because it's the end times bibiliya ivuga ngo haza undi fara utarigeze the bible says another pharaoh came who never knew them uyu ntabwo ari umufara wo munya Afrika this one was not an african pharaoh muri kirya kigeje ano ntiye umunya Afrika in that century he was not an african pharaoh bakiri abantu bari bavuye muri Palestine they received people from Palestine bo mu bwoko bwa bahixos of the uh, tribe of the hixos bara bakira they received them bisangira ari utwiryanya hagati twabavukana nababyara ba profitaho bafata intebe they and they intermarried and had uh, children no no basanzu tubazo oh they found turi muri king dome kwa fara they had each they found issues in the kingdom of pharaoh barabinjira na gahoro and they infiltrated they became administrators barakomeza bukeye bakorera pharaoh w'umunya Afrika ku deta and then they made a coup d'etat to the african pharaoh haza pharaoh wo muri palestine bitaga hixos and they came another pharaoh from palestine called hixos uwo niwe wagiziriye abisraeli na he is the one who enslaved and mistreated the israelites karagaciye kugira ngo mumenye ko mufite ubutaka imana niba ho ubutaka is for you to know that you have land may god give you the land abanya afrika bayise baha bene yakobo bene israeli ubutaka barororoka bavuye muri muri egiputa ari miliyoni zirenge chatu Three million Africans gave the Israelites land and they multiply 
They came out of Egypt as three million people. Number four, the fourth blessing. It is wealth. God gives you health, a family, a land, and wealth. And have livestock of cows, uh, pigs, all kinds of animals. Do you know you know you should, that's a livestock that you can uh, raise and have a business. Yes. When we talk about the pigs, those are not the ones that Jesus sent to the water. It is the food that our, uh, uh, people in, our, in this country eat. Let me tell you something small. Honestly, a salary cannot, is not enough to live. No. Business is. And you can do business. Let me stop there, but may you receive the blessing. This is what he said. He said, God, enlarge my territory. Please bear with me. Give me five minutes. This was just the first one. He said, God, give me a blessing. It is a blessing. Four blessings, health, family, land, and wealth. If you tell God, God, give me a blessing, these are the four things that he will give you. The second prayer, he said, enlarge my territory. Let me tell you. Let's read in First Chronicles 255 255 Ah Abatirati, Abashimeati, Navasukati, Abonibobande, Abakeni, Vakomo Tsekuri Hamati, Seumuriango, Warekab. And the families of the scribes who dwelt at Jabez were the Tiratites, the Shimathites, and the Shunathites. These were the Kenites who came from Hamath, the father of the house of Rekab. Iman Esubishing is Sengeshuriand. Whose prayer did God answer? Yabes. Jabez. He said, God, enlarge my territory. Give me a large territory. Okay. Then, he had his own land. And they called it Jabez. He had a land according to his name. Where the Tiratites, the Shimanites, and the Shuhatites lived. Do you know these people? They come from Hamat. Hamat And Hamat was the father of the house of Hekab. These were Kenites. Yeah, they were Kenites. I told you that Jabez was a Kenite. And there is a family or a house called the house of Rechab. Let me speak about it a little bit. Before I talk about it, many times, we find that we discover that Jabez is a toponym 
the name of a place because he prayed and said, give me a large territory. He had a city according to his name. Jabez. Jabez. He did not get one house as the one I prayed for. May God give you the countryside of Abilene to be yours. You think it's not possible? No. No. Do not not look at your small land or your small uh, place and say this is enough. May God give you half of Fort Worth. Let me give you an example. This city of Jabez as they were children of Kenites and there was the house of the red cup they came from this is 1 Chronicles 2.55 they talked about his city and then the person here in America who went to Washington? Who went to the state of Washington? May God bless you. Who went to Washington DC? Oh, You live in this country and you have never been to the capital city? You are going to remain in Uvira and not live see Kinshasa? Nico. It's like living in Makamba and never get to see Bujumbura. Go to DC. Those names, who do they belong to? General or President Washington. General or President Washington. General George Washington was the name, it was named after the. He, this land was named after him. Washington D.C., Washington State, New England, Washington D.C. and the state of Washington were named after him. Houston, Houston, Houston. Sam Houston is named after Sam Houston. Texas. He was the first president of the Republic of Texas. Texas itaraja kuyandi maetangu hure na na za Louisiana Louisiana irifta ba France ba France bara igurisha ihure na 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 nani wa Oklahoma Oklahoma yari mo abared India benshi chane ba zakuwe fata kungufu iingi iingi chali gicho cha cha Mexico ali kugifiti mo presidenta wita Sam Houston buke ye bara hafata ba ni America. Houston ba hitirira we. Donc izina Houston, Houston. Tabga izina ryavuye mu kirere n'iryo umuntu. Ndagira ngo nawe tuzagira umutugu tutukwitirira. This state of Texas before it was joined to Louisiana who was owned that was owned by the French and uh, uh, Oklahoma that was owned by the Native Americans. It was uh, its own republic and Houston was named after this state. So may God also name you after a land. Austin. Austin. Ario capital ya Texas yumus. Which is the capital of Texas. Yitriwe umunu wita Austin. Was named after a person called Austin. Yabes now. Jabes. Yarafit umudugu. Dama do kusengo manu nyaguri limbago. Yaisahabu umudugu. We mukira mga wanu wakome chan. Mumu. Okay. These three families that they talked about that lived in Jabez, 
they were uh, savants. They were very smart because Jabed had established a school that was teaching the, those people and they became very known as uh, smart people or savants. Yeah. They were Tiratites. They are Shemanites. And Sukkahites. These were musicians. And they were the scribes. And they had a library. In the city of Jezreel. It was a great city. And people would move to Jezreel. How Jezreel. did he achieve this? After he prayed, that what the Bible said that he was more honorable than his brothers because no brother of him had its, his own land. Amen. Amen. He was from these people from Rekab come from Jabez. Look in Jeremiah 35. Jeremiah 35. Let me give you a small story. This house of Rechab was from Kenya. They were Kenites. These Kenites of Jethro who is also Jabez come from. They had been taught principles. It is the only family in Israel who obeyed the God of Israel and never drank alcohol. The, Jabez, the sons of Jabez who come from Rechab of the Kenites they never tasted alcohol. These were uh, passed on by their fathers and their forefathers. Jeremiah 35, what he says in the summary. But I'm going to give you a small uh, summary. Jeremiah, told Jeremiah, when I told Israel has something, they don't do it. But Jeremiah called the sons of Erechab of the Kenites of Moses, father-in-law that they may come to the temple. When they get here, you are a prophet and they believe you. You must open the wine and tell them them to drink as the prophet. And they came. He opened the wine. And they told him, even if you are a prophet, we will not drink alcohol. And he said, why? Our forefathers forbade us. And our fathers before. And God turned to to Jeremiah. He said, Jeremiah. Do you see how Rechab, the sons of Rechab obeyed their fathers, but you cannot obey me. That's what Jeremiah is talking about in chapter 35. I'm just speaking two verses to read. Are you tired? Just bear with me. I'm going to Jeremiah 35 1. Just go verse 1. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the day of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. Go to the house of the Rechabites, speak to them and bring them into a house, the house of the Lord, into one of the chambers and give them wine to drink. These are the children of Jabez who follow the principles of God. Let's go to verse 5. Verse 5 says, Then I said before the sons of the house of the Rechabites, bowls full of wine and cups, and I said to them, drink wine. Let's go to 14. Then I said 
ngo be kunywa vino yarasohojwe kugeza na bugingo nubu ntibayinywa kuko bumva itegeko rya basi ntibayinywa kuko bumva itegeko rya basi kuza ngo ariko nje navuganye namwe kazinduka kare nkababwira ndi muri akanyumvira banze kwiwa the words of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, which he commanded his sons not to drink wine are performed. For this day, they drink none and obey their father's command. But although I have spoken to you rising early and speaking, you did not obey me. What your fathers and your forefathers told you, they, they obeyed. But Israel, I rise early and speak. I speak in the evening. At night, I speak. And you don't obey. But they still obey because their father, their forefathers say so. Verse 16, where Jeremiah is speaking to people. Surely the sons of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, have performed the commandment of their father, which he commanded them. But this people has not obeyed me. 18. Eighteen. And Jeremiah said to the house of the Rechabites, That says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, because you have obeyed the commandment of Jonadab, your father, and kept all his precepts and done according to all he commanded you. Therefore, that says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab, the son of Rechab, shall not lack a man to stand before me forever. These were taught at the school of Jabez. And they had principles. Do you know who killed Jezebel? When Elijah came back from the pit and anointed someone, who did he anoint? Yehu. Jehu. Ah. Jehu. Jehu. He anointed Jehu. Amavuta. Asigana Elisha. And he anointed Elisha. Who will replace him? And he threw his. Who uh, Elia ya kunze Yezebeli? Because Elijah ran away from Jezebel. But he anointed the one who killed Jezebel. Who helped him? Who fashije Yehu kuicha Yezebeli ninga we kwa ha. Who helped uh, to to Jehu to kill Jezebel and the army of Je- uh, Jezebel? We want him one moment. You wouldn't know that person. If you can't know Jehu, you can't know this person. His name is Jehonadab. Jehonadab. He was the son of Rechab. Who were the people who were the son of Rechab? Who were the people who were the son of Rechab? Who were the people who were the son of Rechab? Who were the people who were the son of Rechab? Who were the people who were the son of Rechab? Who were the people who were the son of Rechab? Who were the people who were the son of this person is from those who fed the north, the, uh, the same people who killed, the same people of Jael. Because God has said, this God will always have somebody to serve me in this family. These people don't read the Bible. They just like to hear the preaching. Matthew 7, 7, you shall... The Father's Prayer. You should read the Bible. Second Kings 10, 15. Because the Lord said that the 
turi kumwe eh hey, turi kumwe aramuga ngo rero ngwino tujyane nawe nibutunganye mpuko boko kwawe arakumu ahera ko amuriza amushira mu igare rye baragenda aravuga ati nuko tujyana urebe ishyaka ndwanira uwiteka nuko amujyana mu igare rye bageze Samaria bat atsemba bari basigaye bose mu bantu ba Ahabu bari Samaria kugezaho yarimburiye kuko uwiteka yababwiye uwamufashije yeho ni yeho na davu ngo muri famiye ko ba ya besi bagira gishuri ibu ya besi bigaga amategeko yima now when he departed from there he met jehonadab the son of rechab coming to him and he greeted him and said to him is your heart right as my heart is towards your heart and jehonadab answered it is jehu said if it is give me your hand so he gave him his hand and he took him up to him into the chariot then he said come with me and see my zeal for the lord so they had him ride in his chariot and when he when he came to samaria he killed all who remained to ahab in samaria till he had destroyed them according to the word of the lord which he spoke to elijah kumurango wa 23 yehu azana na yehonadab mwendere kabu bagende bavuga igice cyose mwendere kabu kugira ngo mumenye ko ari abakeneti mumenye ko ari bayabese mumenye ko ari kwa bayetiro abanyafrika ngo batsemba abantu bose basengaga baal uwo munsi bakurikizira muri israel Oh hallelujah. Imana igwe gukurikizira mu nzu yawe. May God give you to remove the evil from your house. Icyaga tataravuga ngo kuboko kwa yokumbeho. Number 3 is God's hands upon you. Ukuboko kw'Imana kuvuza iki? What does the hand of God mean? Amabwiriza y'Imana. God's instruction. Imana ikakubwira. God would instruct you. Dutanga amabwiriza dukoresha amasinya amaboko. We give Ero. instructions using hands. Ero Jose. Jose. Uramenye hariya. You must know this. Na. Mu gihe burayo in Hebrew ukuboko bisobanura instruction amabwiriza The hand means instruction Icyakabiri number 2 ukuboko kwa kumbe ubyavuga giki uzamporeho presence yawe It means God's presence ukuboko kw'Imana The hand of God ngo kumfata ku musatsi kurante ya Ezekiel ndo ke ari presence y'Imana It lifted me from my hair that was Ezekiel ukuboko gusobanura iki What does the hand mean? Kurindwa ni Imana. God's protection. Yikoko kwimana kuri kuri wewe uburinzwe. When God's protect hand is upon you you are protected. Icyaka ni kuboko gusobanura iki? What does the hand mean again? Icyerekezo. God's direction. Iyo giye guha umuntu icyerekezo. When you are going to direct somebody, werekana kuboko. You use your hand. Uragenda. You go there. Nugera imbere. When you get there, utambike. You turn right. Hanyuma ukomeze. You continue. Ugenda utya. And then you go left. Ijya ni direction. That's direction. In Hebrew it's a hand. When a hand is upon you that means I'm going to lead you. This is what God he asked. Give me your instruction. Give me your presence. Give me your protection. And your direction. And God gave it to him. That's why he had a city and he had a school where people were coming to learn wisdom number 4 kurindwa ibyago keep someone from evil iri jambo kurindwa ibyago to be kept from evil ni jambo rivuga ngo nokurindwa urupfu it means to be kept from death ibaze imagine usaba ibyo so kabihabwa if you ask all these things and you receive them nubwo uri mu isi yandoye ariko ubusa nuri muri paradise You may live in a filthy world but you will live in paradise. Do you have God's blessings? Is your hand is his hand upon you? Are you protected? I do you have a large territory? Is God protecting you from death? If you receive all these things will you still be on this earth? Oh yeah. No. Igiye yabese yasenze ngo uzandokore mu byago havugwagamo kurindwa urupfu. When Jabez prayed to Uh, keep him from evil he referred to rescuing him from death yabes arasa no muntu wibera muri paradise kandi akiri mu isi yanduye jabes looks like someone who lives in the paradise while living in a corruptible world abarabe baba yuda the jewish rabbis muri muri midrash yabo na talmud bemera ko nyuma yo kuzamuka kwa henok na eri akazamuka in the in the talmud and uh, the other book is yes in the talmud the uh, other than enoch and elijah be ascending to heaven without dying 
They said that Jabez was the third one. Kuko Because he asked God to keep him from death. Kandi Imana ngo irabimuha. And God gave it to him. Bemeza ko ari mu bazamu. And they confirmed that he's one of the people who ascended. Badafui. Without dying. Ibyo si Bibiliya. That's not the Bible. It is just research. Na tradition oral. And oral traditions. Muri Israel. In Israel. Bavandim. Brethren if you pray and God answers you you will live in a corruptible world but you will live in it like you are living in paradise remember as I conclude the prayer of Jabez is a good example of how we should make prayer a priority in our lives. Ichakabidi. Tugomba gora dushakisha imana kugira ngo idufashe mu gihe gikwiriye kandi dushobore guhita dufata ibyifuzo byacu tubigeze imbere y'intebe y'ubuntu. We should always look to God for our time in for our help in time of need and we can take our request straight to the throne of grace. Hanyuma isengesho rya Yabes ritanga urugero rwiza rw'umwana w'Imana wegera isumba byose yicishe bugufi afite kwizera no kwiringira kugira neza kwimana kubuzima bwe and the prayer of jabez provides a wonderful instance of a child of god approaching the majesty on high in humility faith and reliance upon god's goodness icyo mbifuriza my wish nuko mugera mu rwego rwa yabez is that to attain the level of Jabez where you would pray and God will change your life and God will bless you give me a blessing enlarge my territory may your hand be upon me are those not good prayers keep me from evil and tragedy may God bless you stand up and let's pray Mfiti ye bzishi Mukiganza chawe Harimo ibyiza gusa Bineze zumutima Mfiti ye Mfiti ye bzishi Mukigaza chiwe Harimo ibyiza gusa Bineze zubundi Fitie amfitie Jesu Mukigaza chiwe Oh Harimo ibyiza gusa bineze zumu fitie afitie Haribo, haribo, Amfiti, we know how to sing it now. 
muri umwanya ari kimana cyangwa ku muzima bwawe Believe in your miracles today. The way job is and God brought him back into honor and the right he was more honorable than his mother God is going to do for you today do you believe do you believe the Bible hallelujah 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 there was a man who had a vision and he was taken into paradise when he got there he met an angel and he told him I will give you a tour of the paradise so you can look and he showed him amazing things even a great choir that had great people worshipping God and other things that a person cannot say but then he saw a house that was very large that you cannot see the beginning and the end and he told the angel take me to this house he told him be patient so that I can show you other things first he took him and he brought him and said take me to that house the angel said do you really want to see it he said yes be patient I will take you and he continued to go afar and the person said I am curious to see that house and what's in it and the angel said let's go listen brother we are going to pray I'm going to give you this vision so that you know how to pray in this moment because we are tired of your life the way you live. we are tired of the life you are living and you must also be tired of it this is the time that you must enter your destiny hey, hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. 
the angel took him to the house and he found it as a storage room that is full of things that has shelves he has many shelves and the angel looked at him and he told him do you see these things that are full of this storage are these people you see worshipping who died before they got to their blessings are these people who they are full of blessings because people died and they never attained those blessings. That person was called Jones. And he looked for the role with the letter J to find his name when he opened his cabinet, he found many things that have been there for many years that he never attained. Your wealth is in a cabinet in heaven. And the reason why you never attained is you use strength and you don't pray. You are distracted and you don't pray. Let's pray like Jabez in this morning. And let's remove him from the cabinet. Remove them from the cabinets. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hey! Hey! John prayed, uh, cried. He said, Really? I was not able to get tuition to study. He saw his diploma in that cabinet. My diploma. And he saw a safe full of gold. And he said, Does this gold belong to me? And he said, Yes, this belongs to the people of God. I am renting and yet I have cabins full of gold here. Listen. It is not your age. No good It is Amen. prayer. Who sends? If you pray, no more even though you are old, you make sure you bless it. The blessings of Jabez will come to you. No more Though you may be little, no sing. If you pray, you make sure you bless it. The blessings of Jabez will come no to man you. I hear God telling me, no sing. Pray that people may have a destiny. We are going to pray in this moment. That God bring a destiny. Amen. 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 You are spending too much time in a life that God did not plan for you. The pain you sleep with, the tears you wake up with, that poverty is on That poverty that you walk with. That's not what God prepared for you. You have been stolen. You have been stolen, brother. Your have been stolen. Your children have been stolen. Your friends have been stolen. Your family has been stolen. What you are in today is not what you should be in. We are going to we are going to open the so that your things may come. I pray that you make it. That you may enlarge my things. That your hand may be upon me. That you may keep me from Let it be your prayer today. Pray in this way. 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 Pray in this Bring blessings, Lord. Bring blessings, Lord. Bring 
obras en su obra. Open the door. 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 Kinguri miriango nato we. Kinguri miriango. Kinguri miriango. Kinguri miriango. Kinguri miriango. Manuri miki shaya wo. Aba nani base. Umukabo nazo. Umukore nazo. Bakoga ni base. Bakuri base. Nzuni nzuni takari muzi. Aba karame sana base. Kuri bitanga damza. Kuri bitanga damza. Kuri bitanga damza. Kuri bitanga damza. Hindu muzi mabga banu. Hindu bivera haba. Bakoreho. Bakoreho. Nasa wichere kado kize. Wichere kado kize. Wichere kado kumuzi makize. Wichere kado kumuzi makize. Wizi na gayes. 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 Wow. In the name of Jesus, I pray destiny upon their household. A destiny of life. I should take them in their future. Take their disease away. Take their handicaps away. Take their laziness away. Take their root of sin. I should them in your promises. I should them in your promises. Change their history. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. King will come at the coming of Jesus. Open the cabinet in heaven. Ndakirie Ubutakabganji Ndakirie Kuri ingwa nima Ukuboko kuima Kumuzima abganji Ndakirie Ibziza Kumuzima abganji Undindu rufu Undinde kubabara Undinde kubabaza Koreshe I shall be into the side of Hagab who obeyed the Tegekon the father and the forefathers stood before you the salvation of the Kumugabo Kumugore Kabana Banje Abakwe Abakazana Abuzu Kuru Dakirie Kumujisha Wawe Kuru Gorguanje Kugi Ugu Chanje Kuribene Wachu Munda Yanje Mumutuke Wanje Dakirie Ubgenge Kumenya Kusawa Nukia Dakirie, ibi tanga za, ibi tanga za, mumagara yanchi, uhere yenon, na kiri amagara mezi, na kiri yubutaka, na kiri yumuriango, na kiri yubukire, wizi na kia yesu, amen, haraluya. Imani wa komeze Ihinduru muzima vgaji Ihinduru amagara ya Mwabandi wa mwabasha Ibzakera bilangiri Akira